Drake put on one of the best performances that I've ever seen. You weren't you weren't there. I, I regret it. My friend here, Sandy, went to the Drake concert in Melbourne uh, last night, and we're here to lay our thoughts on that. So I went to um. So Jungle Beats, we're doing a little. Uh, we don't just review music, but if you've been following us for a while, we've reviewed uh, concert experiences as well, performances. So we've done... Hold on, let me check this recording. I get paranoid. Yeah, we cool. That is very true. We did, uh, we did a Mick Jenkins. Yeah, we did well. Mick Jenkins, which we is cool. We did Denzel Curry. Yeah, you did, because I didn't did go to Chance him. the Rapper. Chance the Rapper. And we did... Um, uh, Sanfa. Uh, and uh, Iggy Azalea. No, we didn't do her. Um, oh, we wish we did her. Yo, <laughs> 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 gosh, something wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> so Drake was in Melbourne uh, the other week, and we had a VR. I'm gonna tell the whole story. It's a great story. Um, first of all, Drake put on one of the best performances that I've ever seen. You weren't, you weren't there. I, I regret it. Um, but honestly, out of the 15 shows I've been to, I counted them. Um, in the last three years, four years, it's up there with it's either Yeezus or Dr or Drake's Boy Meets World. Those are the two tours that can. So you know they're the best, man. Right. To to get to the point, there's no other show that had this type of. Um, and if you're at the show, you can't you you understand what I'm about to say. But the attention to detail on this performance was incredible. Like setup wise. Setup wise, have you seen any of the videos? No, so I'll put them in it. the background while I talk. So what you're probably seeing now is you're, you're, uh, as I'm putting it on the screen, the set was incredible. I took a lot of photos, a lot of videos. Um, it was a huge stage. There was a lot of pyrotechnics, fireworks. There was a bunch of lights and balls in the ceilings. The balls ended up falling from the ceiling, lighting up and, uh, and kind of bouncing with the music. And that was all timed with Drake's hand gestures and the way the track dropped. And it was all so perfectly timed to a T from everything. It was so well executed. I was so impressed by that. I didn't know what I was walking into besides the big world. Holy shit. So he started with free smoke, all the smoke came up and then he's free smoke, free free smoke. smoke. and then just if well, they went it just went off. But the first time first night we went, um, Drake was in Melbourne. If you were at the, if you're in Melbourne you know it was really rainy, it was thundering, it was uh, but it was warm during the day, then it kind of got into the rain and thunder. And we'd been lining up since about uh, ten AM, right? We had VIP early entry tickets and because we want to be the front row, that's how I want to experience my concerts and waiting for, and we got to about 3 p.m. We were told by the coordinated what would happen and everything. It's like, all right, Holy cool. Holy shit. Dude, like I said, like, to go from this giant ass sun to like light lighting to like these fucking red balloons in the background. Yes, yeah, unreal. Bro. And then the lights, like, bro. Unreal. Um, and you can just have Look right. at that shit. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, Fuck me, man. And basically, at one point, uh, it started raining it, and we were just trying to get undercover, uh, just waiting. Mm. And the security guard just started getting to the door. And at one point, they just said, "Go that way. Run to the next door. Go." And out of the couple of security guards that were there, a stampede of about fifty to one hundred people just started running, just running to the next door because everyone wanted they wanted to get their spot. They wanted to be at the front. Um, there was no queue at this point because everyone is now stampeding. How early did you get there? 10 a.m. I was the fifth person there. And you obviously didn't get. You obviously didn't get the front. You gotta wait for it. Um, we're running to the door, and then I try and maneuver myself back to the front. Apparently, this is now a new line. Um, but no, the security guys trying to trying to get everybody back and trying to hold everybody. They're just trying to get us undercover. I think because health and safety. I think they're liable if they're their people are up underneath the rain and thunder. I don't know if that's true. Um, and then the next point, they started coordinating us to the next door, to the next like security gate, right? And it's like, don't run, don't run. Of course, people start jogging and running because they just want to get their spot. And I'm just worried about like, it's a clusterfuck now. So I'm just worried about, you know, I want to get the spot that I've earned and that um, the people around me have earned. So that's what everyone is worried about. But the people behind us, all they want to do is get to the front there. I was like, they find an I opportunity. I think you fuck about the people, man. No, that's, what I, that's what I'm learning, right? This situation taught me that when you're desperate, other people are only looking out for themselves. 
and also like a lot of people are on substance as well so it adds to it as too 100 percent. so eventually like we get to a point where we actually have a nice line okay we, it's all cordoned off by gates and shit. there's a nice line we get inside the building we'll end we enter through an actual different arena Ma margaret court are you familiar with margaret court arena it's next to rod laver no, I'm not at the at, and then eventually here's what it looks like it looks like a uh, just you know those stanchions those the little plastic fucking so they have a they have a they have a pole and then they have this little plastic black thing that runs all the way you know those things right that kind of coordinate events cordon off events there's the guys like going it's hilarious but this little black thing and we're all standing we're all standing in front of it right so you, were you at the front of the stage i was at the front i, I made my way to the front okay um just like I, well, I'm with my with my girl right at his point, so I'm trying to like make sure. Are your girls with you at 10 a.m.? Uh, she came later, but um, she had stuff on. But yes, yeah, she when she was there with me, um, later later, and so we're standing there. I'm worried about, just worried about her safety as well. You know, that's a priority as well. You know, I'm I'm fine with myself getting pushed and shit, but um, she's a priority as you would protect someone you care about. Um, so we're all standing here. It's probably about 30, 40 people wide. Right, and then there's a huge pack of people behind. Okay, probably a uh, hundred people deep, um, all just packed in uh, underneath the building, um, and they're still trying to people enter as they scan us and do the thing. So they scanned us for security, and they let person in, and we just quickly get try and get to the front. Okay, so then at some point, the we're door six. Okay, so everybody has ticket has a different door entrance, and the, it's a circle. Oh, so it's gonna be a massive. It's gonna be like Hunger Games, bro. Fucking, hu that's a great example, like right? Right? So now, um, oh great, our door was right in front of us. Some people's door was like door 15, which was around. So that means people have to run, right? But it, and after like fucking 45 minutes of waiting, of just standing there, we realize, okay, we get some, they tell us, oh, there's been some production issues. Like they're actually having technical issues with the production. It makes sense why, because it's such a high tech complex set. You gotta make sure that the sound's reaching each certain area in the crowd perfectly. Everything, right? The fireworks, everything. Um, and so, all right, cool. We're waiting, we're waiting. And then what they do is they, they announce, okay, if you're this door, go this. Actually, you know what they tell people to do? They say, if you're door 15, move to the left. And what is so stupid. You think 100 people sitting in just one area. Now people are starting to push to get to their side. And then they try and push the other way to get to the other side. So clusterfuck. We're just standing at the front, just trying to hold our position. And then what they do, security guard, security guard. They link arms, right? This is their tactic. Fucking, this is what they came up with. They create a wall of security guards in front of us. And their goal is to, was to let slow, well, it was to get people to walk slowly to their door, right? One person at a time. That didn't work as planned. People were screaming. People were yelling. People were upset people were frustrated people who fucking who were at the back were getting to the front because they're just bigger and stronger and pushing people right so um all right at this point um we're trying to get through um my girl has a pretty tough time getting through it's like it's, it's um she gets pretty anxious in those situations you know because it's a lot of people a lot of people pushing you know people are are afraid like of a stampede and you the last thing you want you know those sh you hear those festivals where like people yeah. get trampled on and shit die, man. that could have easily been this situation right um because of the the, the volume it's of people with these events people put this, this artist ahead of other people's safety oh it's only about getting to the front and just yeah. getting their position mm -hmm. um and so our doors in front a dozen or like two dozen people end up in front of us, unfortunately, by the time we actually get to our door because they wouldn't, motherfucker wouldn't let me through. Um, eventually, they let, let us through. And they let you through? Because he's, I don't know, they're trying to let in one person at a time very slowly. They thought I was pushing. Don't push, don't push. And my hands are up like I'm getting arrested. Do I look like I'm pushing? Anyway, doesn't realize the hundred people behind me are pushing. We get to the door. I'm like, I'm a little fr frustrated because I'm now, damn, you know. Um, I got here at 10 a.m. All right, 10 a.m. And now I'm like behind two dozen people. Like, I that's some bullshit. You're learning that, like, the bigger concert you go to, the time you come don't matter as much. It matters still, but not as much. Compared to, like, if you line up at a venue that has, like, a few hundred people, you're always guaranteed yeah. that spot. But when it comes to the thousands, man, you never guarantee that. Well, there's more risk, yeah. Mm. 
and that, you know, this was a chaotic clusterfuck. I've been to 15 performances. I've been to Rod Laver many times. There's never been like this. He's probably the biggest artist in the world right now. 100%, you know, so it's going to be some crazy motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but luckily, by the time we actually get into the, we're walking down the stairs to get to our position. So basically, it's a cordoned off area where um, we have our own exclusive kind of area of, uh, towards the front, which is great. So the GA and then there's us, which I've never been to a show like that. It was great. Um, but it was big enough where we could find our own spot at the front. Luckily, it was about 100 people wide. So it was, it was big enough. But unfortunately, um, we weren't in the ideal spot. I wanted to be with other people, at, uh, friends of mine who were there. Um, but that's fine. Clusterfuck that Rod Laver Arena. Just shout out to them. Shout out to the shit, to the, the low quality. Uh, uh, some of those security members were very, very... Uh, unprofessional um i just gotta point that out and um uh disrespectful and unorganized so i just want to point that out you guys need to pick your shit up kanye west yeezus was the most organized you know what they did the wristbands they put a one two three they did that for all the early entry it was it was great and it worked to a fucking team oh, so you, you would you would think common sense or what works would work again but that's okay you know different people different situations that was years yeah. ago so now to the performance. And share, hey, if, if you were there in Melbourne, share your experience below as well, because I'm just one person sharing one perspective. If you got your own story of what happened, share it below. I like how you said at the start of the video, like it was one of the best things we've been through. You spent like 20 minutes explaining how much you fucking hated just getting this early, not getting to the front. Is that, is that, should I have structured it it's like, like that? It's like Charles the Rapper, like you said. Like, you know, oh, because the fucking shit took so long, you never even got your good spot. Man. Exactly. Is that smart to structure it like that? Should I have structured it like that or structure it differently? No, 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 it's fine. Well, you can just, well, basically, I reckon it's good to include this, but you could definitely, like, you know, I don't know. You do you, bro. To the performance. Just amazing performance, bro. It gets on, free smoke, crowd. Crowd's not even pushing behind us. We actually had room and space to actually move, which was great. I was so surprised. You know, everyone kind of gave each other space, and there was none of that. It was one of the only concerts I've been to where I didn't feel pushed or, like, cramped. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, which was surprising, but it might have just been because the area we're in. So the concert starts, the fucking Drake's on. He's pretty high up. Like, the stage is real high up, unfortunately. So it's harder to connect. But what impressed me the most was that beyond the pyrotechnics, beyond the lighting, beyond the set production, Drake made the effort to take 10, 15 minutes to point individually point out people in the crowd and thank them and say what's up. I see you right there throwing an X all up in the back. I see you, baby girl, in uh, Toronto versus everybody in the black. I see you right here in the pink, baby, blue shades on. With the uh, Point Beach World and the Burberry scarf right there with the revenge. Everybody in the top, make some noise for you. And connect with them. So you'd be like, yo, 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 you with the straw hat over there. With the glass, with your girl. Yo, I just want to really thank you for coming, man. If you've been supporting me for a long time, I fucking thank you, man. Really fucking means a lot. You over there, go ponytail. And you would look like you with your mama out there. Like... You look like you've been with family for a long time. You cry. Like, I just want to thank you. That means a lot to me. Is she like that? Yep. Fuck yeah. For 15 minutes straight. That's fucking amazing, I goosebumps man. at one point because I'm like, holy shit. If That's real appreciation One of the right best rappers, um, one of the biggest artists and influencers in the world can do that and humble themselves to take time out of their show mm-hmm. to do that, then, you know, it just, it's inspiring. It's, it's like when I saw Eminem. I fucking didn't enjoy that concert okay. because... He cut all his songs short and there was no interaction and he just walked off. Really? Little Wayne was better than him. Wow. Well, the Drake's... But like, when you have interaction like you just said, that yeah. really makes a concert. 100%. Man. And he's going up, singing, rapping to the people in the crowd. You know, girl had a sign up, happy, it's my birthday. He's like, oh, well, happy birthday then. Blah, blah, blah. You know, she lost her fucking mind. But, you know, he's pointing out dozens of people and they're feeling connected to Because as an artist, they're on top of the world, right? He's got mm-hmm. a motherfucking... Big ass planet on his set, boy meets world. He literally looks like a king, a god, but he takes the time to connect with his audience, which is just uh, not common. Mm-hmm. Um, it was so good, in fact, I'm really experienced that we decided a couple hours before, five hours before the second show, to get seats to the second show. Um, and that was also amazing. To see it from a different vantage point, because mm. from seats, I've never been to seats in a concert. I've always done. It's more relaxing, less in, uh, less interactive, but more relaxing. One hundred percent, one hundred percent more relaxing. So we got two different perspectives, and 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 that's kind of my my experience at, at Drake. If you've never been to a Drake concert, 
You got to go to the next one. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I will be. I but the, mo- the most interesting thing that's relevant to us, look, he said it on both his show at the end. He showed a lot of love to us. Like, he really loved the Melbourne crowd. He said at the end that he's going to be going home and make going home and making the best album he can. I'm going to go straight home and I'm going to make you the best album that I can possibly fucking make. Because I realize for us and the way he said it and the way he phrased it, I'm like, all right, we might have a Drake classic incoming. Maybe. You feel doubtful. I'm not doubtful of Drake. I just feel like his best work's behind him. Ooh. He's, he's got a big discography, man. Yeah, he does. He's got like Toe's very own, well, So Far Gone. Thank Me Later. Take Care, Thank Me Later. Uh, if you're reading this, it's too late. Uh, views. Nothing Was the Nothing Same. Was the same. That's, life. That's, that's eight albums already there, man. That's a huge discography. And in those, I think he's got one classic. If Jay-Z, Potentially two or three, depending who you if are. If Jay-Z can come back at this age and make 444, I believe a guy like Drake Yeah, can but come Drake back. is a lot younger than Jay-Z with his discography, man. That's true. So Drake probably has more potential to do what Jay has done, but... I don't know. I hope Drake makes another classic. I hope he makes another album that I love. I've loved... There hasn't been a single Drake album that's come out that I've not liked. There's been ones that have come out where I haven't liked as much, but I've always like left... That with certain things that the album I'd be like fuck yeah that's why Drake's one of my favourite artists man like I followed him since the very beginning I got on to him early I think Thank Me Later was probably the album which I did enjoy the most but there was still tracks that I fucked with the most like Over is still my favourite single from him to this day yeah he played that shit mm, I fucking love Over alright battles on me long to my drink yeah. so that's uh, my experience with Drake we'll be coming back I'll be seeing are you going to J. Cole for the weekend J. Cole tickets sold so quickly man they did I, I, I went to buy tickets as it went on and I didn't get them. Well, because skate bots fucking took all of them. You gonna buy resale tickets? No, oh, depends on the price, man. I don't have a lot of money at the moment. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll be going to J. Cole on the weekend. I'll be, I'll be coming back with my experience of those shows. Oh, hell um, yeah. If any of you guys are in Melbourne um, and want to, you know, uh, you know where to find me. I'll be in that line. Want to hit, hit me up and, you know, be, be a part of that experience and be a part of that line. Happy this man's going to be bored, man. He just wants some entertainment. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Drake concert experience done. Thank you, Drake, for putting on one of the most memorable performances that I've ever had. Put your story below um, if you were at any of Drake's uh, performances. If you've ever seen him, I'd be curious to see how he, like Toronto. Imagine him being in Canada, performing in, in his Toronto, home his home crowd. Imagine mm. that shit. Imagine how rough the crowd would be there compared to Australia, bro. Oh, fuck me. I don't know, bro. Jungle Beats, man. We don't just review music. Also, I didn't, I didn't go to Drake. If you didn't, if you didn't realize. Jungle, motherfucking bitch. Drake <laughs> might have just... Did he just beat out Kanye? Did he? Oh. he it's close. It's very close. It's close. Very close. Drake, man. <laughs> Melbourne. Sheesh. I'm, I'm actually going to say same level. This is just... The team goes... <laughs> Last name ever, first name greatest Like a sprained ankle, boy, ain't nothing to play with Started off local, but thanks to all the haters